Welcome to Off the Press this morning. We'll be taking a look at different stories and uh, making the headlines this morning. With me to do so, it's uh, Tuboswa Akeju, reputation manager, and the uh, political analyst, the public affairs analyst also, mm -hmm. Dr. Femi Idowu Adigoke. Good to have you both this morning. Thank you. All right, welcome to today, Tuesday. Uh, December is fast approaching. I'm excited. So let's get into the nation newspaper with the excitement. We have uh, up for review this morning the nation newspaper among others but we'll start with the nation newspaper and apc uh, national working committee leaves suspension on akari dulu that story is on page 41 i'm also also pardoned uh, lagos prince and ex-servant sentenced to death that story is on page four as displayed there already on your screen or your assembly to screen council caretakers today, APC boycotts uh, plenary on page 43. Nigeria loses $400 billion illicit cash to foreign havens. That's on the front page there on, uh, and continued on page 8 of the nation newspaper. The big um, Inside two die in Lagos gang war. Oluwo Queen Channel, uh, went, what went wrong? That's on page 40. We'll find out what that's about. Let's go to the big story, which is Senate hate speech bill for Nigerians to decide. Good to hear that fury over social media using Canada and Egypt's PIB electoral reform to get lawmakers' attention. That's on the front page. And um, we have federal government being guided by laws on Shawere, according to Malami. It's continued on page eight also. Now, as Governor Yari, uh, government under probe for 200 billion naira fraud. Wow, that story is on the front page where it's continued on page eight. And court orders Naira Mali's arrest for car theft. You see on the news again? Wow. On page five, an army redeploys 20 generals on page six. Where do we begin this morning? I <laughs> think. Okay, uh, Dr. Femi, I don't know why Thomas is looking at you, so maybe okay, we'll allow uh, you to well, start. I would like to start from the big one, uh, where they the say hate it's, speech. Hate speech bill for Nigerians to decide. Mm. Well, I feel, personally, this their hate speech bill would die a natural death. It says their hate speech. The way yeah. you, you've just dissociated yourself from it. You know, it is like, their hate speech. <laughs> yeah, oh, actually, you agree, their yeah, hate speech. I actually said personally, it has to me. Mm. And it would die a natural death. Oh, and then so. I think to also explain what we need to do now as a citizen. He will explain. Yeah. <laughs> he explained <laughs> off air. So, I mean, I, I, I was saying before we came on air that mm. um, the public hearing is going to happen sometime soon. I don't have, you know, the date. Mm -hmm. um, what is very important is that there must be um, representation that cannot be silenced at that public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, the accounts and the happenings at that public hearing must be everywhere on social media so mm. that it will, only, it will be only vocally clear that we don't want this particular bill. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the, the, the writer there was talking about fury over social media in Canada and mm, Egypt. Egypt. I think we have a global problem of fake news, mm -hmm. uh, dissemination of the wrong news. And we know one president who likes to use that line. Yes, and um, what, we're, what we're being faced is that there's a paradigm shift in how we live our life. There was a time when we needed to wait till four o'clock or to a particular time to get the news. There's an empire that has been built around the news being available 24-7. Mm -hmm. And now there's a shift where the news breaks on social media. So even before your press men or any, I mean, a citizen reportage, we need to find a new way mm -hmm. to um, to manage the phenomenon. And the new way to manage it is not going to be to gag it. Do you understand? Yeah. It's not going to be to suppress it. Yeah. It's to reorientate people about the use. And I think that along the line, these things will find a way to um, correct itself as long as we are being objective about it. So I'm happy about, and like I've said to um, to different for all that, the, the fight against the hate speech bill mm -hmm. is a classic case study of active citizenship, which mm -hmm. it means that if all of us would pay very, very strong attention to situations in our country, what's going to happen is that we're going to get people to act in the way that we will be beneficial to the general good mm -hmm. of the most in our society. So I look forward to the final debt and burial of 
the eight speech bill. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you, especially the point relevant point you, you raised there to say pay attention to when the public hearing will be and yeah. to use the yeah. social media effectively, yeah. you know, for that. Yeah. And I hope um, everyone will be key into that and do the needful. All right, let's go to, there is something else here. Um, which one do you want to talk about? No, it's you. Okay. <laughs> um, so <laughs> there, I mean, there are quite a number of, um, you know, uh, news items catching my attention, mm -hmm. not only here. But let me quickly talk about Nigeria losing 400 billion illicit cash to foreign urbans. And, mm -hmm. and um, I, I mean, the, Malami made this comment at, um, at, um, during the speech at an event. And um, the, the, the question is, I think that... Billion, 400 billion dollars. We, we, um, we know what the problem is half the time. The question is, do we have the political will power to solve, to solve the problem? Mm. When I saw that news, that's the first thing that came. You know where this money is mm. going to. You know the people taking the money there. Why are we talking about it? Do what you have to do and get the money back. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. And that's unfortunate because we're getting, it's mm. impoverishing the nation. What oh, there's that? a news item that's going to make us talk about, you know, um, um, and uh, when, we, when we get there's going to make us talk, talk about, you know, the revenue issue mm -hmm. and the debt issue. Yeah. But I guess when we get there, we would, um, we'll make. Okay, over to you, Dr. Femi, uh, which I well, know you were saying something about the Lagos Springs. This is Lagos, Lagos Springs. Springs and yeah. sentenced to death. What's um, that story about? Is the former, uh, the son of the former uh, upper, the immediate pastor about of Lagos, I think Gaoyeko, was involved in mm -hmm. a murder case. He actually paid his uh, domestic staff, mm -hmm. a 27 year old man, in his 50, he paid a 27 year old man, I think 60 or 6,000 naira. 6,000. Uh, 6,000 naira. Yeah, to some people. Kill the 62 year old woman and then dump her. In the in the well, about a thousand foot below. And is this, is this the case has been home for seven years. Mm -hmm. They've been in a police custody for seven years. I'm happy we're getting uh, there's judgment now, and they are, they will die by hanging or so or something. The story says, but this should send a message to every one of us oh, that we sad. should not behave as if we're above the law. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because he was a prince, he feels he can do. And this undo. is scary. Yeah. Also this. very scary. Mm. Absolutely very scary. This is scary. And for 6,000 naira, it takes someone's life. And the 27-year-old is gone also. I mean, oh, he'll be... Yeah. They're going to get out. Such a life wasted almost to say, okay, we'll move on from that story and to something else. As Governor Yari government under probe for 200 uh, billion Naira fraud. Why is it that most of our leaders, when they leave leadership position, they have questions to answer? Because that's when you will uncover what My they've goodness. done. Because while they are there, why don't we just you... have clean? I mean, for lack of a better word, finish and go clean. Like, I'll don't come back with. I'll tell you why you can't come back and uh, just go there and go clean. We've said it over and over again. We have a system that is wrong. You don't put money in people's face. Uh, two boys always say we need a process system. When the cookie jies in front of everybody, yeah. and everybody just dipping yeah. their hands, this yeah, all of them. But it's not a justification. Yeah, really. no, there we're not saying it's there's a justification, but we cannot talk about them still without putting the right the, thing in place to cop them. You see, there's, there's it's human. There's corruption all over the world. Exactly. Is is the system that rates. helps you to you yes, know keep it, it in the check? Rates. I, beg absolute to power. I, mean, I beg to disagree. Absolute power there's, corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And when you uh, on a, on, on uh, um, one of your programs mm -hmm. here, the advocate, the advocate. You talked about um, how much some states were spending on security votes, then you will come to understand, you know, how some of this money can get stolen by anybody. <sighs> I mean, there's been constant conversation about how most of the states in Nigeria, the governor seems to have you know, a very strong control over the House of Assembly. Mm. What that, the reason why you have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary is because you want to counterbalance so yeah. that there's checks and balances. Well, so the moment there seems to be an arm of government that, you know, seems to have so much stronghold on another arm of balance, then what are we doing? You get, we already mm -hmm. have a problem. So that's why 
states that is, you know, almost not economically viable, someone can yeah, steal see, 200, 200, 200 billion. Billion. You know, I mean, what, what is the state? Too. See, let me just have what is the state generating? Mm. The sta that state do not have IGR to that level. Uh, you know, so. But because they wait and they're waiting for, Thank goodness. they go bowl in hand for handout at the center. Mm. And the money is there to be given to. It's just a one big sugar daddy with 36 girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> wow, such a way to put it. We'll move okay, away that's from, a new one. <laughs> we'll move away from the nation newspaper before you talk about something else. Let's go to uh, the Vanguard newspaper in the interest of time. Uh, so why Senate will okay Buhari's uh, 29.96 billion uh, billion dollars loan bid, as according to Lawan there, already displayed on your screen. That story is on page five. It says Buhari has provided details and debt burden rises. Now, APC, a national working co committee, leaves suspension on Akere Dolu, Anamosu, Korocha, and others on page nine, and two killed as RTEAN uh, uh, road transport workers clash in Lagos. That story also is on page seven. Um, PA, President Muhammad Buhari at 77. Wow, please tell Baba we are with him all the way. Okay, that's according to Femi Additional saying that, right? Senate won't pass hate speech bill if, find out what if, if is on page eight. And um, Lagos Prince and domestic staff sentenced to death for mother on page six. And then the public death figures from 2015 to 2019, you can see it there displayed on your screen. and. Um, well, oh, there's something that's Vanguard close at the NMM Awards. Of course, that's honoring their own at the media awards that took place over the weekend. Congratulations to them. The story is on the front page, but it's continued on page 41. Now, where do we want to begin here? Um, two <coughs> stories um, really grabbed Excuse my me. attention here. Bless you. Uh, the first will be this, this, the, the 30 billion dollar mm -hmm. loan. Interestingly, there's a 30 billion gang. Yeah. <laughs> and, Federal um, government has also joined the gang, in the gang somehow. <laughs> apparently. And uh, there's the subsidy story. So I'll start with, and, and they're kind of linked. Mm -hmm. You see, there's no problem with the, the 30 billion. No, there's really no problem with 30 billion. The problem here is, mm -hmm. and I'll make an analogy. Um, if you have a, a water system, Mm -hmm. where there's leakage somewhere. No, no matter how large the reservoir is, mm -hmm. you are going to, you're, you have wastage in the system. So no matter how much you pump more water into that place, it will still go away. we have a problem. So the first thing is that there's a lot of wastage in our system. We have an over bloated government. The 30 billion is not the problem. Mm -hmm. And I say that as long as we continue to focus on the wrong thing, we will not solve our problem. The 30 billion is not the problem. The quite number of things. The first thing is wastage. The number two thing, is we keep there's a reason why this our debt profile um is it has become very worrisome to mm -hmm. everyone and um, you know uh but i think that we are not explaining it everybody keeps saying that uh, uh, uh loan to gdp ratio is low but at the end of the day you don't pay back loans mm. with gdp you pay back loans with revenue yeah. and mm -hmm. if there's anything that we've complained about recently is the fact that Government revenue mm -hmm. is dwindling. Yeah. Normally, if you're running a business and you need to, you are, you are having liquidity problems, one of the first things you're going to do is to do what? Cut cost. Yeah. How is our government mm -hmm. cutting cost? So, you know, this everywhere, there's so much. Every, almost every now and then, the news is that the foreign reserve is reducing, mm -hmm. um, um, our government revenue is dwindling, and then it's at that particular time that we're going for a loan without um, you know, making necessary changes to cut down on our cost. Mm. So again, when um, the Senate president says things like, oh, um, the legislature is not rubber stamping the executive, mm. it's times like this that it has to be a precondition to say that if you're going to get the 30 billion, mm -hmm. then we need to sit down and say that, how are we going to cut this mm. cost? Yeah. And you have to have skin in the game. The Senate and the legislature must also be ready to cut costs to say that, you know what, 
I'm going to cut our own cost. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and cut your yes. own cost. You know. Yeah. So you go and take 30 billion. They say, oh, we're going to monitor and ensure that it is for infrastructure. Do we have the processes and the systems in place to ensure that we don't have over bloated contract? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's part of the wastage. So the 30 billion, again, is not the problem. The problem is, one, the wastage we have, how it's spent, you know, and how we can, you know, make concerted effort to increase government revenue mm -hmm. and not by taxing businesses or the people mm -hmm. to death because that's where the government is taxing heading to. Taxing the people to death. You know. <laughs> and which takes me to the issue of forced subsidy. I, also, I mean, I don't know if you're going no, to No, I just that. want to add something to mm -hmm. uh, that one. The Senate president himself, I don't think the Senate knows what they're doing. You say you're not a rubber stamp Senate. You're giving excuse for the uh, executive for taking mm -hmm. this loan. And at the same time, you're saying they should look at doing public-private partnership to do some of because this loan is supposed to be for infrastructure development. Yeah. And you're saying that. So I don't know what the Senate is actually mm -hmm. standing for in this case. But the challenge is the people, as a people, we, they are going to go ahead and take this loan. We know that because yeah, of what the Senate is it. saying. They are going to take they, it. They will. It's they will. not for the Senate mm -hmm. alone to monitor as they've promised that this money will be used for what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I think as a people, we need to bring, put it on ourselves to monitor this all through because this loan yeah. is coming back on all levels. Yeah, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. That's what it translates to. The, 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 the issue of subsidy is one big monster that that's we're your fighting. Second, that's the yeah, second story. That's the second story. You say FG spends $492 billion on petrol subsidy in, in nine, nine months. months. 51.5% mm. increase. Yeah on what was budgeted for for subsidy. And this is how I put it. The real gist about subsidy really is that you're actually subsidizing the elite. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So um, uh, if you drive a four-cylinder engine compared to someone who drives, uh, and this is an analogy, mm -hmm. someone who drives a V8 or who drives a V12 or who, like, who has a sport car, God, the federal government is paying more for the guy who is driving a V12 or a V8 yeah. engine than he's paying for the guy who drives a Ford. That is where it gets interesting. The government is paying less for the guy who owns a bike mm. or who's driving a Kekena Pep. So is the government yeah. really subsidizing. I think what we That's need to do, absolutely. What we, what we need to, what, what, what government needs to quickly do is, and, and I know that there's so much reliance on the, the Dangote refinery, mm -hmm. you know, coming into operation, perhaps in the next eight, maybe 12 to 18 months, okay. hopefully. I don't think that it will completely eliminate subsidy. It will reduce it, but it will not completely eliminate it. I mm -hmm. think what the government needs to do is to start thinking right into the future and build the infrastructure that will ensure that what do we spend most of the petrol on? Transportation mm -hmm. and power. Yeah. If you can power, fix mass transit, you reduce that significantly. Yeah. And then if you can also fix power, and I think that there has to be a lot of concerted effort to do it. You know, this morning when I was reading some of these news items, some of the things that came to my, my head is that we try to solve Nigerian problem in four years. Mm. It is not possible. Yeah. Let's think, be realistic. Yes, let's be realistic. <laughs> the problem is starting four years. Yes, it is starting four years. So we need a, we need, yeah. you know, on, the, on, on October 1st, I did say here that we need the melting point. Mm. And what I mean by that in all ramifications is that we have to look 10 20, 30 years into the future yeah. and say that these are the things we need to do and start to do them now. And I always say to my, yeah, to my friends, the same thing is like, if you start to look for money where you need it, then you are going to have a problem. Yeah. You have to make the That's money true. before. So we yeah. need to, the traffic we have today, the, the radio yeah. traffic we have today is an effect of bad mm -hmm. planning, you know, and all of that yeah. over the years. You know, some Absolutely. of the, they said, oh, I was speaking to the doctor this morning. I said that, oh, there was really no problem on Saturday. What had happened was that there were too many events happening at the same time. Apparently, most of the event centers do not have parking Come lots, out. you know. So what happened was when, 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 when someone approved the building plan for those um, um, event center, they, never they didn't the factor in lot. the parking lot, and they were suffering for it now. Some of those event, event yeah. centers have been there for years. You understand? So I think that what we need to start to do is to really look into the future. I really, really strongly think that you need to de completely deregulate 
mm. the downstream sector. You need to remove that subsidy because what will happen is we will find an alternative. I mean, I was speaking to um, someone in the oil and gas industry over the weekend, and the person was telling me that there's a significant, you know, um, um, sub, um, substitute okay. for power generation yeah. using gas. Yes. Yeah. You know, wow. that, you know, is almost 40 to 50% cheaper than what we presently have. But if government continues to subsidize, mm -hmm. nobody's yeah. going to come with that new business opportunity yeah. and all of yeah. our business are set up to make profit. All right, yeah. in the interest of time, uh, we'll just take headlines for the punch because we okay. are no, almost no out of time. No, and okay. the punch says uh, December 31, we will wait the negotiation deadline. Or your River State and Kwara Gombe, others fail to raise panels. Ogu State workers to begin strike on Thursday. We are in dark in Cross River, says uh, 2UC. We'll urge you to actually get uh, the other papers which are not able to go through now in the interest of time. And I'd like to say thank you, gentlemen. It just looks like we started and it's already over. That's right? why I said I would just get <laughs> The many started. issues of there's, Nigeria. There's too many things to talk about. <laughs> okay, so we'll be back here again tomorrow right. at the same time. Thank you, Dr. Femi, for oh, always uh, obliging us. And this is where we're going to call it a wrap, unfortunately, uh, for today's of the press. We'll continue tomorrow, same time, 8.30, here on Plus. TV Africa and I am Amaka Okoye. Have yourselves a good day.